Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. In the past couple of weeks, we've been talking about dissonance. We've talked about how preparing and evaporating dissonant tones can help your chord progressions. And uh, we also talked about using thirds and sevenths in the bottom of your chord voicings in order to get those extra juicy bits built into your chords. Well, today I want to talk about something that's a little bit different. I want to talk about a kind of a dissonance that is static, that's stable in a sonority. I use a technique that I like to call pandiatonic modal saturation. If it sounds like word salad now, I think by the end of this video, you're going to understand what I'm talking about. <music> Well, first of all, if you've seen a couple of my videos now and you're not subscribed, please, now's the time to hit that subscribe button. We're building a community of composers, uh, songwriters, producers who are trying to learn more about music theory as a way of extending their own musical vocabulary. I hope this is music theory for everybody. Well, last night I watched the first episode of Feud, Capote versus the Swans. But here's what I noticed right away. What's that music? What's that interesting music in the title sequence? What's the underscoring? Who's that composer? I, my ear was caught immediately. One of my favorite film composers is Thomas Newman. The composer on this series is his daughter, Julie Newman. Now, that was really exciting for me. What was exciting to my ear was the use of pandiatonic modal saturation. Of course, Newman is a genius at modal composing. Let's listen to three examples of things that I've put together sort of from my own musical aesthetic, and we'll talk about how it works, how I think of it, maybe how you can use it yourself. Okay. The first one is a simple piano piece. And I think what you'll notice is that in any given moment, there may be four or five notes from the mode existing in a beat or two. It's a fairly saturated texture. And I'm using some tricks to make it work. So here's some marcato strings doing a very saturated texture. These are hexachords, six different tones from the mode. And then I subtly switch modes to get energy into the progression. Rhythm plays an important part in this approach and instrumental form. But in the case of the next example, just long static chords, again, Hexachords, six tones. These aren't functional chord progressions. They don't have tonic dominant relationships. They have modal relationships. It's a beautiful synth sound from Fracture Sound's new instrument, Trails. I mean, we'll be looking at that on Sunday for Gizmo Sunday. But listen, I think the next thing we ought to do is just hop in and do a little review right away. So you remember that every scale, you know, the conventional ones that we use consists of seven tones, seven different tones. And that if I play those seven different tones in different locations in the scale, I'm essentially getting what we think of as the conventional modes. Each of them has a name. Now I'm at the fourth step of the scale, and this is the Lydian mode. You can see them over on the right. Well, if I was a little three-year-old and I just walked up to the piano and I bashed my hands down, I might accidentally get a mode, right? I might get the collection of tones that are the Lydian mode. but. It, it wouldn't exactly be music yet. So what I like to do when I'm building out something that I think of as modally saturated, that is to say it has more than four notes of the mode sort of at once, 
is I want to think about how a couple of parts, maybe even three parts, interact to generate that saturation. And that's what I've done in the first instance. And I'll show you what I mean. In the first example, one hand has three tones and the other has two. And as you can see, they sort of saturate, overlap, and pull together to create this, um, you know, kind of lovely effect, which is kind of five different notes in a way, especially once I get into it. I go from having a couple of Ds to having a C in the bass, and then the B flat in the bass, and then the A duplicates again. And this is a, a really effective way to get a modally saturated sound. It's kind of pretty easy in a way too because all I really need to do is separate out say three notes and three notes. So let's take a look at another mode and maybe make something up which is kind of what I did with that string pop pattern. We'll go back and look at the examples as, in a moment. So let's say I want to have something that's in A Lydian. Well A Lydian is the fourth mode of uh, E major and I've got these notes available to me, and they're spelled weirdly here just because of the nature of this uh, computer that I'm using. The program, you know, likes to spell in flats for some reason. So what if I, you know, play these three notes from the A Lydian scale there and these three notes from the A Lydian scale there? That's pretty. What if I take the bottom note and move it to the top? That's pretty too. The hands aren't overlapping. But I've got an interesting sort of sound going on here now. Now I can just go ahead and drum with this. And if I want to, I could change keys from A Lydian to just A minor. So you can see what just happened there. The Lydian sound went to the minor sound. I'm using six notes out of the A mode, whatever mode I'm in. And it doesn't have to be A Lydian to another A. It could be A major or A Lydian to F major. So here's my A major, here's my F major. And that's a great sound, I love that. I don't know, it's a B-flat sound as well. Well, that was super fun. And um, again, I'm basically thinking to myself, how do I interact a fragment or a fraction of the mode with a differing fraction or fragment of the mode in a way that's interesting to me? It could be in a beautiful arpeggio or it could be in thumpa 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 rhythms. Very exciting to do it in thumpa 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 rhythms, right? Like that string part. And then, you know, finally, that beautiful example of long sustained tones. I think now's not a bad time to go back and pick apart those three examples. You can see that the pattern is really the thing that's validating the complicated harmonic sonority. If it wasn't for that rhythm, for that pattern, I don't think we'd appreciate this sound as much. And again, it's just worth noting that when you look down at the keyboard, the right hand never changes from those three notes. The left hand goes through um, a permutation, which begins with those two notes, and then the bass note drops. Then it goes to those two notes, and the bass note drops. Then we pop up, right? And the bass note drops. And then we're back to where we started. At any given moment, there may be four or five notes from the mode. All right, let's look at the next example, the one with strings. And this is extra exciting because it's got a couple of instruments on it, and it's got a strong rhythmic flavor. If you listen to it, it's kind of a 7-8 vibe, which I just square off at the end of every two measures. So you hear a little hiccup rhythmically. But 
still works pretty well. You can hear the one, two, three, four, one, two, three in the pattern. And looking at it closely, you can see it changes its modal identity. So there's the A minor sound, the A Dorian mode. And then kind of a G minor sound, the E's are flat, the B's are flat. And then this is a kind of an aggressive E dominant sound, C sharps. And then back to where we started. Let's look at the last example. And these are just long sustained tones and just so lovely, really, I think. Well, here's our A sound. And then sinking down. I've got six different notes or five different notes from each system, saturating the mode, creating a sense of place rather than harmonic narrative. I really like chords that aren't just three notes or even just four notes. Five and six, maybe you can make seven work. And of course, if we used other scale systems, the octatonic scale system, whole step, half step, whole step, half step, et cetera, we could probably argue that there's other ways of expanding this palette. Listen, I hope this has been useful. Like and subscribe and ding the bell. You'll be notified when I do my videos and I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.